Some Americans are getting back to work, but women who make up more than half of the unemployed in the nation could be facing a longer road back. Beth Humbert is an associate professor of management at the University of Massachusetts and an expert on gender and diversity in the workplace. Professor Humbert, thank you for talking with me. So if you're a hiring manager who's trying to get the business back up and running, what do you need to think about creating in order to get women to come back to those jobs? We've seen a lot of forward-looking companies, not just for women, but having kind of waited through this period, offering one time a month Fridays off or making a policy that no meeting should happen before 10 a.m. or after 2 p.m. And so this is a real moment where those managers, the hiring managers, to your point, have a really big job to do. We've all experienced the burnout of this pandemic work life. We've experienced what it means to have no boundaries between work and home. And so we, I'm hopeful that managers having experienced it themselves can kind of model that transparency as we're trying to get people more comfortably back in the workforce. One other point though I want to make is we tend to largely talk about this with a professional bias, right? And so I'm concerned about the way that we as organizations and managers think about helping the less professionalized workforce that probably felt these impacts even more starkly. I have to imagine people have been knocked off the promotion path. People have been knocked off uh, the opportunity path. People have been knocked out of um, specific jobs and opportunities. Uh, what do you think has been lost in this pandemic for women? I think the more recent statistics are saying since March of 2020, 4.5 million women exited the workforce and we've only seen about two, or I think still 2 million remain out of the workforce. Some of the latest estimates suggest it's gonna take about 18 months longer for women to regain that labor force participation, 18 months longer than men. And then we have some of the similar dynamics that you would often look at when women would take time off for child rearing, what level are they re-entering at? And then other women are really thinking hard about their ability to go back to work at the same level that they were at before. You use the word burnout, and I think that's a really good word because everyone I know is feeling stressed and completely burned out. Are you seeing best practices or something that you would say in terms of strategy for business around mental health um, and getting people back on track financially that, that you like? We're seeing um, some companies are actually paying employees a bonus to use vacation time. So if I see you use a week of vacation time, I will give you an extra thousand dollar bonus. We are seeing some companies institute um, every third Friday is a day off for the entire company and calling it a mental health day. We are seeing some companies that have typically used like an ERP, an employee resource program to have mental health offerings through the organization, actually giving individuals a stipend to go use the, find their own mental health care. We have to see what the difference is of having these policies on the books and who's actually able to use them. Professor Beth Humbert, thank you for talking with me. Thank you so much, I enjoyed it.